Who takes a photo for a book cover like this and goes, you know what? That's the one. That's the one. Welcome back to Odd Man Sports, officially the longest running show in the history of the game day. I'm your host, Brandon Perna, the only football talk show host with a desk that's still under construction. I also have another internet football show called Desk Ed Sports that I also film in this very basement, which just a few days before Halloween is now being haunted by the ghost of Joe Pesci from Casino. Here's a DK Metcalf speed round of what I've got for you on today's episode. First, some top shelf original NFL observations that most definitely were not just cut from my other show. Then a successful Hail Mary bet from this past weekend which completely opened up my eyes to a new frontier of random bets I need to be making. And at the end, as I do every week, I will address one team's fan base to mainline some cold, hard truths into their collective bloodstream. And this is going to hurt. Just like when Mike Nolan mainlined Tabasco sauce directly into his eye, so he never had to watch the Cowboys defense embarrass him again. Will it be your team I address? Well, you gotta watch the whole episode and you've got a one in 32 chance. And as the host of a sports gambling show, I'd say those odds are still better than the Jets money line this week or the Broncos money line last week that I bragged about being winnable on the game day's Instagram account and ended up looking like a real idiot. It's time for dinks and dunks. The segment where I show off my rapier wit. And speaking of rapier, Antonio Brown. Allegedly, Brown signs with Tampa Bay as Brady's fixer-upper project in a move that just reeks of waste and insecurity. The stench is so bad, I don't even think Joanna Gaines could sell it. You go out and get Antonio Brown when you have a perfectly good Mike Evans that you're just not using at home? I remember when Tom Brady was happy to throw touchdowns to David Givens and Mike Vrabel, two elite ball catchers who understood what open concept was. Here's a question. Why will Brown's fourth marriage succeed when the previous four with Pittsburgh, the Buffalo One Night Stand, Oakland's annulment, or New England all ended the same way? Bad divorces that kept having AB's income with alimony. Now the Buccaneers, I think, are counting on the fact that this time the mercurial wide receiver will have a stabilizing voice in his ear. And I mean mercurial in the same way that people used to go crazy from mercury poisoning. And no, it's not Tom Brady's voice stabilizing in his ear, nor Bruce Arians, but one Tony Robbins, Tom's second snake oil guru, who he reportedly set AB up with earlier in the season. And hopefully, I'll be imitating this Tony Robbins book cover as AB methodically derails TB12's quest for his seventh ring. The title of my self-help book? Told you so, idiots. Why didn't you listen to me? Oh, yeah, cause you're stupid. Get help with this book. Now here's one thing I did not expect to say. Some good news out of Washington. A second year wideout, Terry McLaurin has emerged as both a star and a leader, reportedly commandeering the locker room and addressing the team after their 25-3 demolishing of the Cowboys. Perhaps to keep the McLovin spirit going, I propose the football team should be named after his vest and be called the Washington Aladdins. Nothing problematic there, baby. The even better news though, coming out of Washington, was that head coach Ron Rivera has completed his final round of cancer treatments. <laughs> Hell yeah, Ron. Washington posted this video of Rivera ringing the bell at the treatment center. As he rung the bell like the damn fine man he is, he said, I can't believe this is what we used to call getting a concussion in the NFL. Now moving on to the team that quickly replaced Washington as the saddest in football, the Jets. Sorry, no, it's actually the Cowboys now, but I really needed a Jets segue here. Sam Darnold's return from a shoulder injury and Adam Gase's handing over of the play calling duties didn't change the outcome as the Jets lost again, this time to the Bills. 
but rather than kick a team while they're last in DVOA, whatever that means, I'm going to pick them up with a little ASMR. Huge on YouTube, so I'm told. So listen closely, Jets fans, as I whisper some tingly sweet sounds into your ear. They don't call this show Odd Man Sports for nothing. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson, Clemson, Clemson. Adam Schefter is reporting that Sam Darnold has been traded to the Minnesota Vikings for a third round pick. Anonymous scouts rave about LaMichael Pirine's pad level. It keeps getting lower and lower and lower. Makai Becton hasn't failed the drug test in six months, except Viagra. And now we've got Money Talks. America is less than one week away from a civil war. So let me take a moment to remind you what makes this country great. Fast food and opportunity, free enterprise, and more free porn than you could watch in 10 lifetimes. Yes, 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 and yes. But more than any of that shit, I'm talking about the newfound ability to legally make money betting on sports. Stop and think about that for a moment. While members of the greatest generation returned from WW2 to toil in the mines and get black lung just to scrape together enough money to make a better life for future generations of their families, this guy on Sunday made a cool $7,600 betting 25 bucks that both Chris Conley of the Yagi Wires and Donald Parham of the Chargers would both score touchdowns. Who and who, you ask? Who cares? The only thing that matters is they both scored and now he's got enough money to buy every Chargers fan season tickets next year. Go Chargers, go! God bless the U.S. Of A. I do love everything about this random Conley Parham bet, specifically the plus 30,395 odds this unnamed better nailed. It always makes me long for the days of the XFL where Donald Parham probably made less money than the payout for this bet. I said I didn't know who Parham was, but I lied. I know everything. May the Rock's leadership guide many more giant basketball playing tight ends into the NFL. And now it's time for our fan salute. And today, it's Patriots fans. <laughs> oh, Patriots fans. How does it feel to be like the rest of us Duncan drinking dickheads? After last week's 33 to six shellacking by the 49ers preceded by the loss to my two and four Denver Broncos, I have one word for you, bum fuzzle. I didn't say it would make sense, I just have a word. When Jimmy G returned to Foxborough to hammer the final nail in your team's coffin, it must have felt like sweet relief, a swift and merciful death. The Patriots are done and so are you. No more having to root for a team that treated the rule book like a roll of toilet paper at every opportunity. No more having to defend Tom Brady's snake oil and Bill Belichick's bullying of reporters. No more chanting, no days off, when you know you've been unemployed for two years. No more trying to justify smashed cell phones, deflated footballs, and videotaping that 2-14 and 14 Bengals sideline. It's over. You can relax now. Yes, your team has been pronounced dead before, only to rise from the ashes to another 12 and four record and an AFC East title. But this year, even you have to admit, it feels different. After next Sunday's loss to the Bills, it will further be cemented. For the first time in 20 years, your team is like every other team, ordinary rife with incompetent quarterback play, dumb penalties, and inappropriate turnovers. The Patriots, like every other team, will win some and lose some. Probably lose more than just some. Congratulations, you're normal. The cupboards are bare, and Jared Stidham is not the future. Sorry, Mr. Kraft. There is no happy ending this time. Except for everyone outside of New England. And I'm using these next 10 weeks to edge. My only nightmare would be Belichick and the Colts coach for a day 
Josh McDaniels, blackmailing a healthy and refreshed Andrew Luck to come out of retirement next year by releasing videos of him saying words like damn and hell. Which I am realizing as I say this is almost definitely going to happen, isn't it? Oh, damn it. I, I, okay, okay, I know. That was supposed to cheer you up, Patriots fans. My bad. I, d I don't know how to act now that you've got a regular beatable football team. I really do want this to be a safe place for you. So, welcome to the club where your football team sucks. And you keep smiling like this every Sunday. Thanks for watching The Game Day. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel or YouTube will delete all of your Gmail emails.